All right, we're back here with Vantage Point. We've got Michael Strutt on the phone. Dr. Michael Strutt, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, you're on with uh, Robin, uh, Robin <laughs> and <laughs> Laura. Laura. <laughs> yes. Thank you um, for uh, joining us today. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome, and uh, my pleasure. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, I, I know that you had mentioned to me that um, you used to work at a clinic for Enlarged-Danlos Syndrome. Um, did you want to share about that experience? Well, the thing is, uh, a lot of prof- medical professionals are not familiar with Eckler's Staples uh, Danlos st- uh, Syndrome, and uh, we uh, we not familiar how to diagnose it or how to recognize it. It frequently go undiagnosed. So I used to work in clinic, musculoskeletal uh, musculoskeletal clinic, and actually pain clinic in Winchester, Virginia. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of patients with uh, fibromyalgia who was right. misdiagnosed, for, was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. In reality, it was represented with classical hypermobility syndrome or uh, Anthosdana type 3, uh, the hypermobility syndrome. And, uh, you know, a right. lot of them was diagnosed and properly tested and, and treated. Yeah, I had um, I was diagnosed myself with um, uh, fibromyalgia for like five to seven years. It's uh, as a as a misdiagnosis because I mean the the pain comes from just Ehlers Danlos syndrome, in my own opinion. <coughs> my own opinion. I'm not a big believer in fibromyalgia. I'm not sure what your take is on that one though. Well, I believe in fibromyalgia. The right. problem is uh, the, the what I believe fibromyalgia is is actually is a combination of uh, multiple uh, combination of conditions. Right, that's what I think have too. a common Correct. common uh, presentation and uh, also inability of of medical professional to properly diagnose and recognize these conditions and just so basically uh, label it. So say they you know like oh, I'm smart you dumb this is a diagnosis I'm sorry you right. know there's no treatment for it enjoy that's yes. what basically I yes. my take on it. At least with fibromyalgia they have a few medications out there though for Ehlers Danlos syndrome there isn't one orphan drug for the orphan disease. Um, well, the, the, unfortunately, you cannot treat uh, hypermobility syndrome with medication because there is no medication which will affect, uh, which will increase size or strength and size strength of the ligament, right. which is basically antithelial type 3 will affect. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, I, I'm thinking that, um, that I know they try to do a bone marrow transplant as a cure. Um, I mean, I'm curious to see how something like that would pan out. Yeah. I would actually well, a bone marrow medicine? transplant or uh, stem cell, or stem cell injection. injections. This is a little different. Right. So you're because on bone marrow yes. transplant would, would not uh, affect the ligamental stem density or stem cell strength at all. So yeah. There's no benefit to it. I actually. have a question, doctor. What What's your take on... Um, giving pain medicine. I know that there's a lot going on Especially in Buffalo everywhere. Too. Yeah, um, there's that a big people change. are over, you know, giving it to people. What's your take on it? Well, pain medication is useful. If you're experiencing moderate to severe pain, which is considered uh, on visual yeah. scale would be considered six to seven, <laughs> you, you will qualify to receive uh, short term of narcotic medications to treat that pain. However, the, you know, the narcotic medication should uh, it's a supportive treatment they, they never should be uh, administered alone so you, it's got to be a, right. a goal behind narcotic pain medication yes. so if you are employed and you you know and you have a job mm-hmm. and you have a limitation how what type of job you can perform and the narcotic will improve your ability to perform your job right. and it will not impair your in ability your to perform the <laughs> job and allow you to participate in your activity uh, of daily living with less pain and be able to participate in employment mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, gainful employment and you'll be able to sustain yourself, right. well, that will justify the the pharmacological regimen. Another thing is, uh, you know, if you have, if you're receiving a pain medication, you, you know, it's a temporary measure and you're going for some disease modifying uh, uh, modalities such as physical therapy, chiropractic care, uh, injection therapy, therapy yeah. you know, so it depends on surgery. So it, so it's, there's and all this should be endpoint, lifelong medication, uh, lifelong treatment with opiate pain medication are not recommended. However, a lot of people like yeah. automatically assume pain medication is opiate pain meds. Yeah, but no, there's a variety of pain medication. No, there's yeah. five or four or five groups of pain medications which can be utilized, and none of them, some of them non-control, and some of them, yeah, and like most of them are not opiates. 
Do you think some doctors have ruined it for others, just giving it to anybody? And, and I personally do. do. Uh, well, uh, various doctors ruin it for uh, some doctors ruin it, uh, and but uh, I strongly believe a lot of patients ruin it for for doctors. Where that's abuse pain well. medications, yeah, stop pain true. medications, yeah. they misuse pain medications, and uh, so they they create a market for this unscrupulous doctors to prescribe yeah. these pain medications, and uh, you know and again there is a very far in between. Uh, uh, healthcare providers who will will do that. Majority of healthcare providers, I believe, is uh, genuinely in this field to uh, to help people, not to right to contribute uh, to a problem. Yeah, problem uh, narcotic problems on the street. Right. I mean, like when prescribed properly, like um, the way that you do it, your clinic, you know, you monitor it and stuff like that. I mean, like oh, I heavily monitor. So that. the thing is, you're the only doctor I've ever actually had that's been monitor that monitors like that. Um. My old primary used to prescribe my pain medication for 10 years, actually, dating oh. back, and it wasn't monitored that way. But I do like the way that he monitors it because it just makes sure to catch anything before it develops, I guess, is a problem. I, I apologize on behalf of every healthcare professional, <laughs> uh, you know, for you being mistreated like that and provided <laughs> uncontrolled pain medication yeah. or non monitor pain medication in this type of fashion. I apologize on, uh, on behalf of every doctor or any healthcare professional who ever prescribed this medication for being exposed like that. How long have you been a doctor for? Uh, well, I've been licensed uh, since 2005. Oh, okay. Are you from Buffalo? Well, you, you can tell you by my about that one, actually. purely <laughs> Chiktawaga accent. You know, I've, I've, yeah, I've been <laughs> right? <born in> Buffalo. <laughs> I mean, you're the only doctor that I've actually ever met besides, I guess, my geneticist that wasn't, like, blown away when, you know, I did, like, the reverse namaste pose, like I put my hands behind my back. Like, well, um, most doctors are just like, whoa, what are you doing? Can you explain what, you, I mean, your sure. symptoms? I mean, like, basically, I guess for me, my symptoms on a day-to-day -day basis, first symptom is going to be pain. I wake up in pain. I go to sleep in pain. Um, pain medication only do so much. It just makes it manageable, you know, mm -hmm. livable. Um, and then there's also the fatigue. Um, I got diagnosed with narcolepsy. Um, so part of it's the narcolepsy. Part of it's the... Fatigue probably just from um, miscommunication from my nerves um, and the blood pooling in my legs because I get blood pooling in my legs from the way. Um, but from you're very around. flexible. I oh, mean, I'm was, so flexible. I was doing splits during yeah, my pregnancy. I just the whole entire thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was doing some of the, um, you know, the scoring in here and explaining that I got like a technically I get a ten out of nine if you want to count the reverse namaste on the scoring, but. Um, you know, you're the only doctor I've ever met that actually knew what I was doing. Um, the geneticist that I have, Dr. Luther Robinson, he's really nice and really knowledgeable, too. But I remember after I got my official diagnosis of Enlars Daniel Syndrome, um, he was just like, you know, thank you. You just taught me a lot personally myself. And then he was just like, watch out, you know, with your son. And then when you see it developing, which I can see it developing now, um, in June we're going to go and see what he says. He's just basically like, if you think that he has it, then he has it, is what my geneticist told me. Well, the thing is, what you're experiencing is unfortunately cannot be treated with any modalities. And so the, uh, again, there's a lot of varieties of the tissue. Think about this. Collagen can be, uh, you know, you got type 3, so it's most likely collagen uh, in, in your, in your uh, uh, tendons and muscles and muscles and ligamentous tissue, yeah, but you also have a collagen fibers in your blood vessels, mm -hmm. your collagen, uh, collagen fibers in your heart. Your body. So it's uh, so it basically affect every single collagen fiber in your body. So that's why you're going to have a blood uh, blood yeah. pooling. You will have mm -hmm. that will affect your autonomic nervous system and basically creating uh, necessity for heart to work harder, and that will create for you know will yeah, contribute like to your fatigue mm -hmm. and also set up your uh, uh, you know autonomic nervous system not to work. Right, properly. I've got autonomous uh, autonomic, uh, autonomic dysregulation. But the thing is, the thing is, think about this. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I can only treat musculoskeletal component of this condition. Correct. Let's say if you have a bad ligament, right, or bad tendon, yeah, you can what I can develop do is it I can to inject be these ligaments and with, uh, with proliferants, with solutions which will inflame them and right. increase their size. Yeah, because it irritates it, so then, um, irritates you know, and your body, will, your body your goes body will into room, yeah, and then it builds up the tissue and makes it stronger. So will you have to be on pain so, medicine? No, wait, you have a defective I hope tissue. not, but I don't you know. You have a defective <laughs> tissue, but it doesn't mean, but if you increase size, 
by natural way of increasing yeah. the size, you increase tensile strength. It's still going to be um, defective tissue, though, which but is again, unfortunately. But it will be increased strength. Yeah. So I can achieve, you know, you are so lax and you have yeah, so much <laughs> mobility. Yeah. So right Even a little bit improvement. We're starting with my knee. <laughs> a lot of symptomatic <laughs> relief. Starting with my right knee where I got the ALC tear, actually, because I never had surgery for that. So that's probably the first spot that we'll try the, the Prolo for, which I'm excited for. Because um, my, knee, my knee dislocates a lot and my hips dislocate a lot. I wake up with dislocations in my sleep. It's like, I don't think, I can't remember the last time I even slept a full night through. I always wake up in pain. Do you and I'm worry just like, about your son having to go through this? Oh my goodness, so much. That's why though I'm doing this because um, when I was a kid, no one was advocating for me. No one cared. And now that I'm an adult and I've gone through this, it's like someone has to be there for him. We need something in Buffalo set up to advocate for Agreed. Pe- you know pediatric patients that need treatment because right. I was completely untreated until I met my old primary doctor Gregory Schenk who um, helped me with not only pain management but everything until like uh, last year which is actually what a do you big call amount of time. I, out of curiosity what do you call everything? Um, everything is- well I just mean every single system of my body like uh, neurology um, he would mostly listen to me and my research he would ask me you know what have you what's the news lately what have you been reading what are they researching now can we get you into a clinical trial um, he was just very active in now, trying to fix active, me. Okay, he was very, I understand he was very active and he was very proactive. He was very But nice. what kind of help did you actually get? You're still symptomatic. Oh, I know. So right he, now you're on you yeah. pain medication. That's not his he, fault. He can be I'm stable. Con- I'm <laughs> <a> <laughs> of pain medication, but he has no idea how to prescribe them. <laughs> led you to be to potentially become dependent on medication. Right. Again, I'm not saying you are or not. Dependent, it's different than addiction. But potentially can lead to that. Yeah. Symptoms. So, uh, and, you know, potentially the actually using the over, overuse of a pain medication or inappropriate use of pain, uh, pain medication right. or use of pain medication in general to increase your sensitivity to pain now. So now yes, you, it does. you had a yes. little bit of pain, now you're in a lot of pain because your brain, your brain sends the pain differently. Oh, yeah, your, so, brain, your brain can get, like, um, addicted to pain, they're saying it's now. No, it's not about that. It's called hyperalgesia. It's very normal yes, factor. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. uh-huh. you actually, oversensitive when you touch. become oversensitive due to use of pain medication. Mm-hmm. So now, how does he help? you i don't understand well i don't see him but, anymore uh, it's just he was the only one in buffalo that was actually proactive into trying to help there was very little amounts of doctors that want to help with anything to do with endless Daniel syndrome so whether where it's pain management take or neurology your son. my son currently i'm having him go to a new primary that i'm seeing tomorrow mm-hmm. we'll see how he pans out for right now he's with my old primary just because he knows my medical history um and then uh, he's also going to the geneticist with me, Dr. Luther Robinson, in July, or, or sorry, June 1st. Um, so, um, I mean, he's probably going to get diagnosed with the same thing, but it's going to be a level of how much it affects him. I mean, some, like my little brother, for instance, he's got hypermobility syndrome, um, but he only has hypermobility syndrome. I mean, let technically me tell it's the you, same let thing, Let me give but... you an example. I'm sorry I interrupted. No, go ahead. Let me give you a little example of the uh, hypermobility syndrome. And again, I got a, I got, I met a, this girl. Let's pretend her name is, uh, you know, <laughs> hypothetically, you know, like uh, actually, I would, uh, for hip hop purposes, I cannot really be on name. But again, <laughs> let's know. pretend this is a patient. It's a real patient. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so in 2010, I was treating her. So, so I first acquired her, in, and uh, so I started treating her. So I perform at least 10 to 15 procedures on every joint which she has. I mean, oh, okay. I'm talking about from jaw to to ankle. She was she couldn't walk down down the stairs without dislocating her ankle mm-hmm. or knee. And she had four like she got multiple dislocations of the shoulders. Yeah. She had a lumbar spine surgery, she got neck surgery oh. uh, which was not successful. So this girl was totally disabled, was on SSI, was not able to work. She was twenty seven years old when I met her. Oh my Okay. Oh. Now when I start treating her, you know, like I was able to stabilize her joints to the point where no longer dislocation but no longer uh, as, like you described. I dislocate in sleep. I walk down right. the stairs. I dislocate. So no more dislocation whatsoever. Right. I mean, for duration of the time, I still have some contact with her. She never dislocated the joints ever since 2010. Oh, so yeah. she was able to went to neuro, you know she was able to have a semi normal life. She was able to uh, enroll in the nursing program and become a nurse. Oh, that's exciting. And now she's uh, she's actually employed as a nurse. So, what? you know, so the thing is I was able to return this, the f- appropriate treatment, I was able to return this person to be, uh, to be gainful employment, to g- be able to allow her to have a gainful, uh, like, basic education and have a normal life. Right. Which is, uh, like, everybody should be entitled to. Now, right. c- 
considering she didn't have significant amount of vascular involvement, mm -hmm. and she didn't have a lot of, like, uh, she got some fatigue issues, but, again, so once her musculoskeletal system improved, uh, yeah, she sounds was like able she had more fatigue improvement, than but me. She became more active and fatigue mm -hmm. issue resolved. Now, I have a several, several cases cons uh, which I was very successful. This just uh, was a gem of my performance because, right. again, this person, I was able to return to almost normal life. That's really exciting, too. But, As a doctor, uh, it has like, to be. you have to understand, if I tell you I treated 10 cases of anhydrosis or 15 cases of anhydrosis, right. it's 15 more than the majority of people treated. The, a lot of the people don't even know what they have. Oh, yeah, they uh, don't even want to. If it's a doctor, they don't want to diagnose it either just because there's nothing. Wrong. Well, not only if they're wrong, it's just if you download, diagnose them with Ehlers Danlos syndrome, then they don't know where to go from that. There's not much. You just get a diagnosis, and, and then, like in Buffalo, it's like you just sit with it. It's just like I was they so manage excited it? for it. They manage well, it. They should be managing like it, but I, I was like so to, excited uh, for my uh, diagnosis. It got me nothing. To me, you know, like right. I mean, yeah. I, you're not going to sit. I will diagnose. Well, that's what is exciting is, you know, now that I've met this doctor that we're speaking with, I just feel like um, maybe I can get some more stabilization. Like, I don't have as many dislocations as the other patient that he's talking about. So, I mean, hopefully we can stabilize my knee and my hips and stuff like that. Well, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure uh, you know, the thing is, everything now depends on you. If you were able to tolerate what I have to offer to you. Right. And again, I'm not saying you're going to like the pro oh, process. Oh, I know it's going to be painful. Process, we'll just have to process slowly. is not fun because, again, you're going to get basically, principally, every joint injected. So, yeah. hey, hey, I've got you know, whatever is, uh, is affected. But if, again, if I can stabilize your joints, you will have a normal life. Can, yeah. I, can I ask you about the medical marijuana? <laughs> oh, actually, I wanted to ask you about yeah. it. Yeah. Please, please. Yeah. I am a provider oh, of medical marijuana. You are? You, you really? oh. Yes, I am. Well, that's good to know because yeah. I actually was going to go to Rochester um, after we asking were, your opinion we to see if... Because yeah. um, I know that it's a uh, mild muscle relaxant, too, so it helps to stop dislocations um, as well. It doesn't stop any dislocation in your um, well, because I don't know. The thing just is, you, 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 purely, you have a lax ligament and tendon. What does so it do? So in your condition, New York State approved only certain conditions right now right. To, to treat medical marijuana. You possess one diagnosis, which is called Actually, chronic pain. I've got a... Which can be qualified for treatment of medical I have dystonia, too. I have dystonia as well, so I've got two. Is it the oil, or is it the actual marijuana? Well, we have no. It's oil and the oil vapors. I think it, it can be approved for... Uh, oil, vapors, uh, tinctures. I didn't know that you were certified. Uh, you cannot, uh, you, 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 the smoking marijuana is uh, strictly prohibited. Yeah, I don't and want that. That's what I, what I want. Federally, yeah. I mean, I don't want something that's going to give me cancer just to help with something else. Do you know what I mean? Like, But the oil. The yeah, oil I mean, I didn't actually you. know that you were um, a provider of that. So, yes, so who am. would benefit from getting yeah. medical marijuana? Seizures. Seizures, Epilepsy is definitely uh, a big uh, winner. Uh, see, Dystonia. Oh, seizures, epilepsy is the same thing. Uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, yeah, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's diseases. Uh, what about uh, cancer? Cancer definitely. Variety of neuropathies, including painful oh, type of polyneuropathy or idiopathic poly, uh, polyneuropathy. Yeah, I've got polyneuropathy. Well, that's to be determined again. You well, uh, the, actually, so, I can show you the records. My uh, neurologist actually, unfortunately, uh, with an EMG, got that one. Um, for my neck and my spinal cord. Well, the thing is, uh, again, polyneuropathy in your condition would be would be a questionable thing again because you have a lot of radiculopathy, right? And probably polyradiculopathy in the, in your case because of the type of dislocation you have and compression of it. Yeah, of it the depends on the change. So you would qualify on yeah. the, on the on the condition of a severe chronic pain. Yeah. Pain, which that is another diagnosis. Probably never go away. Um, but actually, that's that's good to know. I didn't know that you. Um, but again, honestly, you, between me and between like you know me and the public, yeah. you know, like I don't believe in marijuana as a, as a single single treatment. Right. It's, it's like a a in many cases adjunctive treatment. Yes. And it should be only utilized to increase quality of life, but in ad adjunct to active therapy, not just on itself. But yeah. Itself. I mean, like, it can help aid with the other therapies and then hopefully, you know, Again, balance out and pain. lower, you know, other pain. things. If you, you have a, if you have a progressive condition of multiple sclerosis, Huntington's carrier, uh, yes. you know, Alzheimer's disease, that, that's a, prog I, I, I'm a, I'm a atropic lateral sclerosis, Lugeric disease, that condition will eventually going to either completely disable or kill you. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. that's a, so that supportive treatment makes sense. If you are actually, develop, have Echolis Donald syndrome, uh -huh. and you have, just basically affected quality of life, the yeah. marijuana become, again, 
adjunctive treatment. Even just with nausea. Does it help skin pain? Skin to skin or cannot yeah. be used? I mean, like from the reading that I've done, does it, it helps help pain. pain. I do know that Tylenol actually itself does work on the cannabinoid receptors in the brain. It works on CB2. Um, so it's, I know that it's um, a non-steroidal anfl- anti-inflammatory, but it's in like a subgroup, um, acetaminophen. But it does actually... Part of its mechanism of action is actually working on the cannabinoid receptors in the brain, which most people don't know. Um, so well, it does, but again, there's a different cannabinoid well, receptor. Well, I know it's different ones. Types I know of cannabinoid receptors, receptors, but... Some of them affect pain, some of them not. Like I said, you, your perception of pain might be different than so the others because if you're of the abnormal collagen fiber. Right. Marijuana isn't going to cure your Like, it's not well, going to help the pain? Well, it's just going to be an additive. Just... It'll help the pain because it is a mild muscle relaxant, and it, it has other the pain, properties. But I'll tell you this. It'll be probably different. Like dextrose, which is basically a form of sim- a form of sugar, right? Dextrose if sugar injected into the ligaments yeah. would be way more effective with marijuana right. to mm-hmm. alleviate the So it would be an adjunctive wow. treatment, you know, with that, because I know it's also an anti-inflammatory. Um, well, the thing is, uh, you know, in UK, is anti-inflammatory is not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. Because you n- actually, you know, the, actually the well, we need it to be inflamed, inflammation right? in the right. areas which are supposed to be. Yeah, it needs to be It's supposed to be uh, inflamed. Is actually beneficial because right. inflammation will lead to collagen collagen yeah. layers and it lead to the healing. Yeah. So that's uh, to you know, the joint, anti-inflammatory. So. A lot of people like to concept of anti-inflammatory. I good targeted inflammation is actually beneficial. Right. Yeah. So for me, for me with the prolotherapy, we'd, I would have to, you know, well, avoid the prolotherapy them. is a, is again is one of the treatment you can use yeah. uh, allograft tissue replacement with platelet rich plasma. You can get, you can have uh, stem cell injections. Oh my goodness! Of, I want that's what I want. A lot of a lot of different modalities which can be treated. Right. Which, which can, uh, available today to treat musculoskeletal I'm, injury. Everything's about your stem cells now, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, they're doing a lot. I mean, like with stuff, stem cells, I could you know possibly develop. Um, you know, collagen that isn't mutated. I mean, like, your body's composed of 85% collagen. You will not collagen. be able to develop collagen. I said, I, I said possible. I'm, I'm not saying that we can yet, but I'm just saying that that's the way that possibly treatment will go. If, if you will inject it, if you will inject oh, my body will your do. own uh, stem cells, well, that most won't likely help. you will not be able to develop because right. you're genetically then altered. They're genetically just going to go to the same direction that they would go yes. anyways. But However, someone else if is. you will use embryonic cells, which right, is correct. immunologically... Immunologic excuse, you can potentially develop normal cells. Yes. Again, that's potentially. I know it's only potentially. You um, know the thing is we don't have good evidence it's actually happening. Right. But needless to say, injections into the ligaments and tendons. Right. On somebody with equus yeah. based on my clinical up, experience, provide can potentially provide you some degree oh. of relief right. of your conditions and can potentially be disease modifying agents in relation to your musculoskeletal complaints. Right. Well, thank you very much for um, coming on the air with us and um, helping to share and build up some repertoire for rare diseases. And uh, I really appreciate your time. You're welcome. And you, yes, thank I, you. God bless you. And I hope you're going to stay healthy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye now. <laughs> um, well, I guess that um, that's basically probably going to wrap it up. Yes, definitely. Yeah.